the movement of the stock market is really interesting to watch in real time. I also really like the idea of physical things that actuate based on things that are going on somewhere else or on the internet. This little stock ticker that I made displays the current price and daily percentage change of the most popular index funds. This video is both a project video detailing how I made and iterated the design, as well as an instructional video teaching you how to make your own based on my design. You can find the files for this, the V3 version of my stock ticker, for free on Thingiverse. I don't make a lot of money as a content creator, and so it took me a long time debating whether I was going to publish these files for free or whether I was going to try to sell them, and I eventually opted to post them for free. So if you want to keep projects like this free, I really appreciate any support on Patreon at patreon.com slash Christopher's Factory or by clicking the thanks button at the bottom of this video. Part of me thinks the giant gimbling head of the stock ticker is kind of dorky looking, but it's there for a good reason. These LCD displays need to be viewed dead on, otherwise they're really unpleasant to try to read. Another reason the head might look kind of dorky is because I'm using this really nice gradient mint macaron filament from Zero, which was donated to me for use in this video. I wanted all of the colors to be like one sweeping gradient throughout the ticker, and so I needed the body of the head and the body of the stock ticker to be relatively close in height, otherwise there's going to be a big color gradient cutoff. So that's part of why the proportions are slightly weird. On Thingiverse, I went ahead and posted three separate entries. You have one for the big dorky head stock ticker, which looks good with gradient filaments. You have a lower profile version that uses less plastic and has a little bit better proportions. And then if you don't like the gimbling head at all, there's a version that doesn't have that swivel. It's just one contiguous body. This deprecated very first version of the stock ticker that I made was honestly kind of a miracle that it worked at all because it was so complex inside and all the components were just stuffed in this little tiny enclosure. It had an 18650 battery in a 3D printed 18650 socket thing connected to an 18650 charging board connected to a buck boost converter connected to the ESP8266. It was just a nightmare. And the reason for making it like that is because I made this shortly before discovering my new favorite board. It's this combined all-in-one ESP8266 and 18650 socket charging module. It's, it's everything that you need all in one package. It significantly reduced the internal footprint of the electronics and made this whole project a lot easier. In fact, you could build this thing with a minimum of two components, just this board and the 1602 LCD screen. When I find components that I really like from sellers that I trust, I buy a whole bunch of them at wholesale pricing and I sell the surplus on my website. So you can check those out if you want one of these boards at christophersfactory.com or if you don't trust me for whatever reason, I guess you can buy it for more expensive on Amazon. I'll get to how to assemble the ticker in a moment, but I want to talk about the code real quick first. I have the copy of this Arduino code posted on my Patreon for free. Anybody can view it. You don't have to be a patron to view it. And it uses a free API from a website that's called finhub.io. They don't sponsor this video, but I kind of wish they did because their API works really well. Basically what happens is the Arduino is going to make an HTTP request for a certain URL. And when you request through that URL using your credentials that you'll get from FinHub when you create an account, it will the website will respond back to your ESP8266 with the data that you're looking for. Then you have a little bit of code to digest the data and then display it on the 1602 LCD display. Here's what one of these sample API requests looks like when you type it into Chrome. You'll notice that this screen isn't very exciting and that's because it's not meant to be viewed by humans. You will need to go to this screen at least once though because there's some data that we need to harvest and put into our code. On the top of the URL bar, click the little lock icon in Google Chrome and then click where it says connection is secure. After that, click certificate is valid, and then there you can see the fingerprint of your browser. Take the SHA1 fingerprint and replace it in the Arduino code. The purpose of this footprint is to let the website know what type of device is requesting the data. Not all websites require this, but I prefer doing this step rather than trying to figure out a workaround. I'm not the best coder. I'm sure somebody can figure this out, but I just prefer a solution that works all the time rather than trying to have to figure out a solution for every different instance or occurrence. But after you replace that out of your Arduino code, as well as updating your Wi-Fi username and password, you should be able to upload the code and you'll get a JSON that prints to your serial output. And if you already have your 1602 display connected, it will print onto there as well. Assembling the ticker is pretty straightforward. You could probably figure it out without me telling you, but I'm going to anyway, just in case. You're going to take out some supports, embed some M3 knurled nuts and hook up some wires. If you're using a swivel version, you'll need to make sure that the countersink of swivel A and the knurled nut mount of swivel B are facing apart from each other. It should be obvious based on the orientation of the screw. You can tighten this little screw pin to make it harder or easier to move the screen. I desoldered the switch and tested which two pins must be connected to get it to deliver power. You will note that even when the device is on, you might not see any LEDs. That's just to save power when you're on battery mode. I jumped off some wires and connected them to a single pole dual throw switch that then screws into a hole in the side of the ticker body and gets fixed with a nut. The other hole is for a 10K potentiometer. 
You can pick two adjacent pins of the pot and jump them off. Then you're gonna take the pin tie off of the 1602 display and connect one of those wires to each pin. Now this is optional, but I do prefer to be able to adjust the brightness because I find that it's better to have a more dim display that I can look at rather than have something shining in my face because these displays are pretty bright when they're at default brightness. If you're using one of the swivel designs, you're also gonna wanna make sure that the wires from the potentiometer go through the swivel before you solder everything together. You can definitely use DuPont connectors on this project as I have here, but I would definitely emphasize the importance of reliable connections, especially when you're using devices that use the I squared C bus. A connection that gets interrupted, even if it's only briefly, can cause the displays to show total gibberish. And I've had plenty of times where I'm sitting there wondering what's wrong with my displays just to find out that it's just a DuPont connector that's a little bit wiggly. So if you're willing to, you know, you can solder wires directly onto the pins and then insulate them with shrink tubing. But if you don't want to, it's not the end of the world. Just be aware that that's something to look out for. Also make sure that you're insulating things with electrical tape if necessary. I found especially that when you're putting this ESP8266 board in there that it likes to short on the housing case, the metal housing of the potentiometer. So just make sure when you're putting everything in and screwing everything together, watch for points of potential contact and just insulate them with some tape. Those of you who are more savvy with coding than I am might come up with a better solution for how to download and display this data. You know what they say, jack of all trades, master of none. In fact, this code isn't even really mine. It's kind of just collected from different pieces of the internet and put together until it worked into something that would actually do what I wanted it to do. So if somebody comes up with a better solution to this, maybe with some functions and stuff to make it a little bit more readable, if you send that to me, I will absolutely post it and give you credit so that people can improve on this design. Here's a hot take about this design though. If I was to start over, if I wasn't as burnt out on stock tickers as I am right now, I don't think that I would do battery power. It's cool to have this little device that I can take anywhere and it's this all-in-one little thing that has its own power. It's pretty neat, but the thing is these cases have four hex screws that you need to take out to get the lid off and then you need to charge it or swap the battery out. It's kind of a headache. Even if the battery lasts a little over a week, it's still kind of annoying to have to do. And I think that I would prefer something that I don't have to worry about turning off at the end of the day. I don't have to worry about taking off the lid and charging it. Even if there was a better lid that was easier to take off, I really do think that the best solution is to just have it wired. I think it's just easier. If you're a real go-getter, I bet you you could come up with some way to connect like a micro USB keyboard to the ESP8266 somehow so that you could enter in your own stock tickers that you wanted to edit. You could change the timing of the cycling through the different tickers and, and things like that, uh, changing your Wi-Fi username and password so that you could give this to other people and they could operate it rather than having to hard code your own information into the code that gets uploaded onto it. But again, I'm burnt out. I've been focusing all my energy on this project for like the past two weeks, so I just need to do something else for a little bit. Thank you again to all the patrons that allow me to publish projects like this for free. I greatly appreciate all three of you right now, and I hope to welcome more patrons in the future. Christopher's Factory, if you haven't noticed, has been scaling quite a bit lately, and so there's a couple of growing pains associated with a growing channel, but I think everything's working out for the best, and I think we're going to have a lot more fun projects coming through the woodwork here. Uh, some really exciting stuff coming on later this year. Thank you so much for watching Christopher's Factory, and I hope you have a wonderful day.